welcome back to Whiteman Motors. Today I've got something that's different for me. I'm usually into Volkswagens. As a matter of fact, I'm always into Volkswagens, but uh, I've always had a kind of a thing for uh, F-150s or Broncos, actually. And uh, I thought a couple, probably four or five years ago, if I could find a, a really nice six-cylinder with a manual transmission, I would probably do it. And so that's what this is. This is an 88. It's the second year of the fuel injection, which makes it a little bit, you know, even even better. The reason I got this one is because it has, uh, it's only, it's got 121,000 miles on it, which is original. And uh, the engine, it's in really nice shape. And it's no powerhouse, but it's got a lot of torque. And that's what they're known for. And uh, I like it. It's, it's fun to drive. And the body is in decent shape. It's not perfect, but it's all original. And it's solid, no rust, and I like that. And it's uh, and there's no damage on it or anything like that, and it's really straight. And you just if you just walk around it, you can tell that it's you know it's straight. It's not perfect, but I again I'm not really into a perfection. I don't need a perfect car because if you have a perfect car, then you don't drive it or you don't want to drive it. You're too paranoid about taking it into uh, traffic and uh, parking lots and whatnot. The spare tire uh, holder in the back that's a swing away style uh, and you have to move the spare tire out of the way every time you open up the uh, tailgate and uh, this has a tailgate that with the window that drops down and then you flip the tailgate down like a like an older station wagon and it's just easy to use actually it's very easy to use uh, with the, even with the manual transmission as long as you don't have to drive in traffic, I think you can't beat a manual transmission. It, uh, this one will get, uh, uh, with fuel injection, it's, it, it can approach 20 miles per gallon. Uh, with, a, with a 306 and uh, on, a, on an F-150, which is the same setup, um, the fuel economy, uh, is, they're not known for great fuel economy, uh, but they're much better than a 302 or a 351. The interior is straight. This is an XLT. It's uh, one step above the XL, uh, which is the basic model. And so this one has the carpeting in it, and it has the power door locks and power windows and that kind of thing. It's got original carpeting and all that, which is nice. I had to replace the bottom of the console there. That's why it's a little different color. But I like that, the two-tone part of the console, actually. So I couldn't find a red one, but I like the that two-tone actually quite a bit and the headliner is good and uh, uh, the dash is really nice the interior is actually really nice shape and uh, I have, most of these have the seats that are get really get worn because of the cloth seats and I've all I had the uh, seat bottoms replaced they did uh, I had a, a fellow in town here redo the seat bottoms and they did a really good job and it matches really well and I'm really pleased with that the seat, the, I don't think the rear seat has ever been used, never been sat in, and uh, it's that kind of condition. And the, the, the carpeting even in the back is really nice shape behind, the, behind the, the back seat. You can only get in the back seat through the passenger side on the Broncos, and so you have to tilt the seat back in order to get it to like that, so you can get in to the seat back somewhat easier. Uh, but it's still, you know, a kind of a stretch. And the the uh, the front end is I've I've had a, quite a bit of work done on this thing. I had to uh, when I got it, uh, the clutch went out on my way home, as a matter of fact, and uh, so I had to drive on the freeway uh, through Seattle, uh, approaching rush hour, uh, with no clutch, and that was quite a feet. That was quite an experience for someone my age to, uh, to uh, play with that and do that. You don't typically do that when you're in your 70s, but that's what happened. So I had to, uh, I had to get a new clutch in a pressure plate and the throw bearing and whatnot. All that was had to be done at the same time. It's had a slave cylinder that's inside the transmission on these. Because of the bigger rear, uh, bigger front tires, the steering was loose. So I had the steering rod replaced. I had a, I put a brand new redhead steering box on it. Um, so the steering is actually really tight. 
And uh, at the same time I did that, we put a new exhaust on it. So it's got, you know, a new exhaust and all that. So it actually runs really well. My old F-150s back in the 80s, uh, I, I definitely used uh, the six-cylinder for pulling with. For all original, it's not bad at all. And for climbing in and out of the truck for years, and uh, it definitely takes a toll on, on, a, on a Ford or F-150 of any kind, or any pickup really. And this is just like the pickup. The engine. This is the uh, the Ford six cylinder. This is the Ford 306, and it's with the fuel injection that makes a huge difference on these. It's a basic six. What you see mostly here is the plumbing for the fuel injection. Uh, just keep regular maintenance on these. It's changing the oil and the, and the filters and whatnot, and these things do really well. Then very, you know, as far as I can tell, it's done everything I wanted it to do. So, but at any rate, yeah. Okay, and we're driving it now. I'm going out the driveway. Yeah, this is no Volkswagen, and uh, but it's not meant to be. This is uh, uh, just a very basic truck, and that's what I like. I would prefer this to have uh, the rubber floor mats. That's kind of my style. Uh, that's what my F-150 is, but uh, I couldn't find one that was a really nice shape and a Bronco that had uh, uh, rubber floor mats and just the basic XL model. And uh, this is, like again, this is the XLT, one step up, but uh, this is the, uh, also it's the five-speed transmission, not the four-speed. And so to start out, you got to start out in first gear on this one. Uh, this is the uh, lighter duty one, which is actually, I like it a lot better than the standard four speed uh, because you've got to start out in first gear and you shift through all the gears. Uh, however, the fifth gear on this is kind of like an overdrive, so, but it's really easy to drive and, you know, it's got power steering and whatnot, so everything works just like it's supposed to. And, uh, it does not have the uh, the stock F-150 or Bronco uh, Ford radio or stereo, but somebody's replaced this with a, uh, a CD player, which is fine. You gotta be in first gear to start. So. thing about Broncos is that it's got really touchy handling because it's such a short wheelbase. It's not like an F-150, it's quite a bit shorter. And uh, so you really notice it's very temperamental when it comes to handling. You've got to be on it pretty much all the time. And uh, it, was used, it was much worse when I first bought it because of the steering. Uh, but now the steering is tight and it does go where you want it to go without, it's not as twitchy as, you, as it was when I bought it. 